Oh, no, it's not one. Oh, yeah. Someday. Here we go. Hey, it says Mike Daly down there. I'm sorry, here we go. We'll just look into this. It says Mike Daly down there, but I'm actually just okay. Where's Mike? Uh, yeah. yeah, sorry, yeah. Mike couldn't make it. He's at his wrestling thing. <laughs> you don't ask me later. Anyway, um, right, so, uh, if you don't know me, I'm Russell Kemp, CTO at YoYo Games, so yeah, I'm afraid I'm, I'm, I'm the one you got to blame for a whole lot of things. I wrote the compiler and uh, I look after GML and things like that, so if you've got questions, you can, you can corner me later. Um, as to who I am, I've been around for 30 years. I've uh, written various games you might have played, did Lemmings, Grand Theft Auto, that sort of thing, worked on Medal of Honor, that sort of stuff. So uh, I've been around in the games business for a wee while. started in Game Maker in 2010 or so, and um, I've been working there ever since. So, what is Game Maker Studio 2? I'm sure, I, I certainly hope that you've... How many people have used Game Maker Studio 2 at all? Oh, is it less than... Oh, it's half. Yeah, thanks, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> right, hang on, which button do I need? That one? Yeah, there we go. Right, so, we were given Game Maker in 2010, and that's when we started Game Maker uh, 8.1. And we started this process of adding multiple platforms. What you guys know as GameMaker Studio One just now, and kind of grew out of all that. And our biggest problem was we've rewritten all the compiler. So GameMaker comes in three components. There's the IDE that you all use on, on your PC or Mac now. And then there's the compilers that actually turn the, your project into something that can run. And then there's the runners. So that's what you'll hear me talk about is the IDE, Compilers and the runners. So compilers and runners, we completely had rewritten in Gaming Studio One so that they all actually were able to run on the targets. And uh, we were kind of taking our whole community through this sort of journey of you can actually uh, it's going to use Game Maker now on multiple platforms, trying to teach everybody. This is why you can not just save a game to any directory on the hard disk. There's reasons why we actually uh, it's don't allow that anymore. You can ask me about them later as well if you want. And um, the problem was that the IDE was written in Delphi. Don't ask me about Delphi, it's just one of these horrible things. It's one of the main reasons that Gaming Studio 1 crashes all the time. Um, and we were um, given this and had to live with it. But Gaming Studio 2 has allowed us to completely rewrite how these things work. So we're redesigning the kind of classic. We've completely redone the UI. We think for the better. Um, you can come and argue with me about that later if you want as well. Um, and we've really tried to focus on the workflow and how people use Game Maker. It is a very diverse community. It's not just programmers, it's not just artists, it's not just designers, it's mixtures of all three. It's people who are using it in ways that we've never even thought of. And we've really tried to focus down on the common workflows that we see people using and making them all consistent and easy to use. And we've tried to get, it's the biggest takeaway I had from GameMaker 8.1. We first added statistics to GameMaker 8.1, and by far and away, the most used feature of GameMaker is the image editor. Right? It is by far and away, well, it outstripped by about like two thirds the rest of all the editors that are used in GameMaker. Kind of makes sense when we actually thought about it. Most programmers will go into it to just knock up a few things, but the amount of stick we've had for spending a lot of time on the image editor in Gaming Studio 2 is unbelievable, but it is actually our most used feature. So, the key benefits of Game Maker, as you all know, rapid development, we've optimized it for 2D development, it's really simple to do cross platform. There's some gotchas, okay, but in general, it's really easy to actually go. We do include all the monetization tools, we do have a powerful ed editor, stuff that we've added. The image editor is now all layer based, the room editor is now all layer based, the room editor is actually really nice to use now. Um, we've redone the tiling, Game Maker Studio 1 tiling, Game Maker 8.1 tiling, it wasn't proper tiling. Okay, it was basically just plonking sprites down and it's it can go from there. That does not it's actually make it very optimal to actually render. What we've done is put an optimized rendering engine in there and you still have your tiles from Game Maker 8.1 if you use the asset layer. Okay, we have object inheritance. The language is not object oriented, but the system is. Right, it's a it's 
a big distinction. A lot of people need to get their heads around that in terms of how the language is, is the, the language is organized, not as object oriented, but the system is object oriented. Modern scripting ed editor, uh, it's everybody has their own special keys that they love to use in their text editor. Their own little features that, that they want. We have implemented a blend of all the things that we think are important and we will continue to add features. Um, a lot of people don't realise this, but the Shader support in GameMaker Studio is one and two, is cross-platform. So you can write Shader for OpenGL ES and it'll actually work across all the platforms that we actually support. Um, the whole of Box 2D Physics is in there, and we have um, the cross-platform networking, which is um, mainly optimised for LANs rather than LANs. Um, level editing features. I'm sure that you guys know most of this. The main features we've got is the advanced tiling system. We do have auto-tiling in there at the editor level. We are going to add it on our roadmap for adding the uh, runtime support for its auto tiling. It's not our largest, uh, it's our, our top priority one, but it is in there. Um, we've got tile animation in there as well, and we are going to be adding more to do with the asset layer as well, in terms of being able to add text and things like that too across time. Most of that is in our roadmap. Uh, we also have this thing that most that people don't realize the level inheritance. This means that you can actually create a room and you can inherit other rooms from that room. So you can set up all your layers, you can set up all your um, uh, it's, uh, main items and things like that. You can put them into the level and every room can inherit from that. Okay, so you can set your views and things like that up. You can set all the layers up so that you've got the common ones that are going to be in every room that you're actually going to create. You can also change Inherit. So if you had a level of a village or something like that that appears at the start of the game and in the summertime, but in the end of the game in the winter time, you can use the same layer system but change the tiles that it actually comes from. And so you can suddenly have all the tiles coming from the uh, winter level um, and that sort of thing. And that's a big thing that a lot of people don't seem, don't seem to have picked up on. Well, we think it's quite a powerful feature that you could actually exploit quite a bit within a game. Um, so we have oriented the whole thing around multiple workspaces. We have user-definable resource views now, so you don't have to just stick with the uh, traditional sprites that things can now organize by type. You can now create your own view, and you can organize it the way you want. You can have level one and have all the sprites and the rooms and the stuff to do with it's the level one. Um, you can there's real-time updates between each editor. Uh, again, level inheritance, you can create multiple levels at once, etc. On the config side of things, as we beef that up as well, almost everything is inherited on config, so you can actually change, so you can have a config for running in Google Play, another one for Amazon, another one for running on your PS4, and things like that. You can drop graphics in and out, you can organize texture pages properly between those. Um, it's one of the big things is that the searching in Gaming Studio 1 is sucks. But when, as we know that, that's why we completely changed it and um, the searching is actually pretty good in, in GameMaker 2. Um, and we've now got the cross-platform source level debugging that we promised. Uh, it's coming in the latest version 2.1. It's actually really nice. Uh, I can demonstrate it later. I've got my uh, machines here and uh, if you want to see it, but it is rather special. Um, so, takeaway points, Gaming Studio 2 is a, a big advance of Gaming Studio 1. It incorporates everything that you really need to make a 2D game. And um, it is very powerful, very focused for fast cross-platform development. Okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to say? <laughs>